Hello, everyone. Um, hi there. Hello. Uh, hi, Jess. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. Hi. Um, so I, my name is Carolina. I'm going to be moderating the session with Katie. Um, Perfect. And just to say that we, um, yeah. So we, so we're going to give you the five minute timer, if that's okay. And yep. um, yes, we'll let you know when that happens. And we heard that you wanted to take questions at the end. Is that right? Yeah, if, if there's a lot of people asking the same question or you feel like it's a question I should answer right then, I'm happy to take one or two. But since it's only a 20 minute session, uh, best to keep too many to the end. And if there's not time during the session, I'll answer them in the chat after, if that works. Perfect. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. We will cool. um, bear that in mind. All right, then. In that case, uh, take it away. Perfect. Enjoy. All right. Uh, welcome, folks. Thanks for joining me today for my intro to PowerShell session here at SQL Bits. Uh, my name is Jess Pomfret, and my pronouns are she and her. The most important stuff on this slide is my contact details. All of these slides and all this information is available on my GitHub repo under the intro PowerShell uh, repo. My email address and Twitter handle are on the screen. If you have questions and we don't get them to, to them today, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, I'd love to talk PowerShell at any point. So let's jump right into it. What is PowerShell? So PowerShell is a cross-platform task automation solution made up of three parts. We've got a command line shell, which includes the best features of other shells, but deals in .NET objects instead of text. This gives us uh, a lot of powerful things. So we've got command line history, so we can easily look back at what we've already executed. We get tab completion and predictions if you're using newer, line, newer versions of PS Readline. It even uses artificial intelligence to kind of guess what you're going to want to write. We've got alias support, which we'll talk about later. We've got the pipeline, which is super powerful and we'll definitely talk about later. And then we've got in console help. So all of the commands that you see, we can look up the help and get examples and uh, descriptions on how to use them. But it's also a scripting language. So you can lose, use it as a shell or you can use it as a scripting language. Is commonly used for automating the management of systems, so kind of Windows administration tasks, database administration tasks, and it can be used to build, test, deploy full solutions in, say, CI CD pipelines. It's also extensible, so you can add on additional features and, and, and stuff that you might need to do with functions, classes, you can write whole scripts, or you can bring in modules, which we're going to talk about today. We've also got built in support for CSV, JSON, and XML. The final piece here, and if you've heard me talk about uh, PowerShell before, you may have heard me talk about desired state configuration, which is the configuration management framework of PowerShell. And basically, it allows you to describe the desired state of your infrastructure uh, using a declarative syntax. So there are a couple of different versions of PowerShell. Uh, back in the day, we were, uh, we were only uh, available to have Windows PowerShell. The most common version of that now is 5.1, and it's installed by default on all Windows systems, whether it's uh, desktop service, uh, versions like Windows 10, Windows 11, or server versions, uh, including Windows Server 2022. The other version is PowerShell, and that is cross-platform. So we've dropped that Windows uh, prefix. It's now available on uh, Linux and Mac and is open source. And it can be installed side by side by, with Windows PowerShell. So you're able to use both at the same time. If we take a look at PS version table, you can see the version I'm running today is 7.2. So I'm on just PowerShell. The easiest way, I think, to learn PowerShell is to start doing things that you do every day with PowerShell instead of with the GUI or with other tools. So I've got three examples uh, of basic kind of Windows administration tasks that we can use PowerShell for instead of using, say, File Explorer. So the first one is the file system. Now, we talked about how we're going to use objects, not strings. And we're going to look at how we can pipe uh, the output from one command through into the next one. So first things first, I'm going to create a couple of uh, new items. So new item given it a name test, I've created a directory. And you can see it's returned here. I've created a test folder, basically. I can also use the same command, new item, but instead tell it it's a file. And I can create this useful file.txt within my test folder that I just created. To be able to take a look at that, I can use get child item. 
and that is going to return all of the things in my intro PowerShell folder. You can see here's my test folder that we just created. I can also use a filter. So if I say filter useful, you'll notice nothing's returned. Well, I didn't find my useful file because I'm only looking at the folder I'm in. I need to add the recurse parameter and say look in all those folders and then I'll find my useful file. I can also use the include parameter instead of a filter. So include all of the text files. Now there's only one in my example folders, uh, but this has gone through all of the demo Docker test folders looking for text files. You can see one's been returned. I can also use the path uh, parameter and say find things uh, for this path. And I can use wildcards. So here I'm saying tests with an asterisk. So it's found my test folder. And I can then pipe. So that pipe symbol is going to take the output from the left, push it through, and then do something more with it. So if I do remove item, it's going to take the folder that it found, that path, and it's going to push it through to remove it. You'll see I get a warning from PowerShell because I've said get rid of a folder, and there are things inside that folder. So PowerShell wants to know if I'm sure I want to get rid of everything, which in this case I am. So I press yes. So manipulating the file system, creating files, moving files, all that stuff can be done with PowerShell and is a great way of trying to learn uh, what you can use PowerShell for. Another, another way is to handle Windows services or background services. You can stop or start those with PowerShell. And if we run get service, you'll see that a whole load uh, rushed through. We've got a status, a name, and a bit of a description. If we use that pipe symbol again, we can say, uh, filter some things out. So using the where object, I'm saying status of running, and now I'm only getting running services. I can also start and stop services. So if I have a fax service on my machine, I can say start that service. Now it's failed to start. There's no sending faxes today, folks, sorry. Uh, but we could also stop that service with stop dash service. The final kind of Windows administration task I want to talk about is processes. So let me tell you about my tab problem. Every time in Edge or Firefox or whatever browser I've decided to use today, I just continually open new tabs, right? So we can use get-process to get me out of that trouble. So get-process is going to return all the processes on my machine, right? Let's take a look at outgrid view. So that is going to pipe get-process to outgrid view. And of course, open on the other window, but let me pull it across here. And I can now have a filter. So I can say MS Edge. And you can see I got a lot of tabs open. It's a bad time. I can also use this add criteria to say process name contains MS Edge, or I can filter on any of the other columns in this output. That's pretty useful, and I really like outgrid view for being able to visually see some of the responses you get back. Now, if, you, if we use the pass through uh, parameter of outgrid view, I can continue to pass things down the pipeline. So get process, push that to out outgrid view, and then push that to stop process. And then in this case, if I open up my window and I look for some of my tabs and I select, say, five of them, you'll notice the buttons down in the bottom hand corner. I can press OK, and just the ones I've selected will be pushed on down the pipeline and stopped. So you can see I got stop process five times for the five tabs I closed. We can also use the pipeline for other stuff, like selecting. So in this case, uh, we can do select object and say first five. This is just like T-SQL, right? Give me the first five. Give me the top five. And you can see this is fine, but it's in alphabetical order, not particularly useful. So instead, we might want to also use the sort object. Get process, sort it by CPU descending, and then give me the top five. And you can see that edge is the one that's using all of my CPU this morning. Again, that's my tab problem. Admitting it is the first step. So let's quickly talk about aliases. So aliases are just an alternative name uh, for commands. And one of the things that PowerShell does well with these aliases is it helps to bridge the gap between PowerShell and other shells that you might be familiar with. So one thing I do want to mention, though, is if you're using aliases, do not use them in your scripts. If you're saving code to share or to use in processes, expand those command names. Uh, but if you're on, the command, you're on the command line, you're in the shell, aliases are a really great way to, to do things quickly, right? So get child item, we already talked about this. It brings us back all of our folders. It does the exact same thing if you pass in dir, which is obviously from command prompt, or ls, which is from Linux and, and Mac OS. And you still get the parameters. All of the parameters that we used come through. We're just changing, we're just aliasing that uh, command name, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, we talked about how we can extend PowerShell and make it more powerful. So the, the best way to do that is with modules. Now, a module is basically just a contained folder of scripts. You can write your own or you can find existing modules. The PowerShell gallery is the main place you're going to go to get kind of community uh, content published PowerShell modules, and you can pull them down. So if I run this real quick, find dash module is going to go out to the PowerShell gallery and say, tell me about the latest version of the DBA tools module that you have available uh, on the gallery. And if I'm using PowerShell or I'm using Windows PowerShell 5.1 or higher, you can use uh, find dash module to find modules. Here I found 1.1.78. I can use install module to install them, basically pull them down from the PowerShell gallery and install them on my local machine. And when I've installed them, I can use import module and import the module into my local session. So now all of the DBA tools commands are available for me to use here. Okay, so we've got DBA tools, which is a community-based PowerShell module. Uh, it's open source and it's like a command line uh, management studio. Anything you can do in management studio, you can do with DBA tools pretty much. So let's have a story, all right? How about if you're sat minding your own business on a Friday afternoon, you're drinking a nice cup of coffee, you're not deploying anything because it's Friday afternoon and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to cause any trouble for the weekend, right? But your, your boss comes by your desk and she's like, hey, are our databases being backed up? And you've got like 400 instances. You're like, yeah, the databases are being backed up. I'm a good DBA, of course. But I need to be able to prove that, right? I need to be able to show her that we are backing up our databases and I need to be able to do that before I go home for the weekend. So how are we going to do that? If we're going to do that in Management Studio, that's going to take a really long time, right? To connect to each instance, uh, right click on the databases, check the last backup date, or write some T-SQL to be able to get the, the uh, last backups. But with PowerShell and with DBA tools, we can handle multiples really easily. So we can say, here's 400 instances. Go check my backups for, the, for all of those instances. Now, PowerShell really likes to teach you, and that's one of the reasons I love it so much it's very easy to find the commands you need and then find how to use them. So we're going to talk about that real quick now. Get dash command is a PowerShell level, not just DBA tools, PowerShell level command that helps you to find commands that you want to use. You can see I gave it a pattern of backup because I want to check my backups. And you can see that I have a lot of things returned. And I've got different modules. Some of them are from DBA tools. Some of them from, are from Azure modules. I can filter that down by saying, we're going to do database things. I'm going to want to use DBA tools. So only show me the commands from that module. Now, PowerShell functions are written in a, in a verb noun kind of format. So the verb tells us the action of the function. We've got backup. We've got getting things. We've got removing things. And then the noun tells us what we're going to target, right? So here we're going to back up a DBA computer certificate, or we're going to back up a database. But we know we want to get information, so we're going to focus on the get. And if you look here, we've got AG backup history, we've got backup devices, we've got get DBA last backup. Now that sounds like something we need. Before we check out the help on that one and learn how we're going to use it, I also want to mention find DBA command. Now that is a DBA tools uh, function and you can tell because it's got that DBA uh, prefix on the uh, noun. But if I pass in pattern, it's not just going to look at the, the name of the function, which is what find command or get command it's going to look at all of the help. So you can find a lot more functions uh, more easily by looking up uh, what you need it to do. So if you know you're going to deal with availability groups, but you don't know if it's going to be called like back up, uh, add AG database or something to do with availability groups, it's going to search all of the help and help you find it. Pretty cool. So get dash help. If you learn nothing else from today's session, I want you to take away get command and get help. Get command will help you find the command you need. And then get help will tell you how to use it. So we're going to say get help, get DBA last backup. And it's going to pull that help up right here in the console. You can see it's going to get the date and time for the last known backups of the database. That is exactly what we need for this problem today, right? Now, you can also use the show window parameter. And what that's going to do is pop up a separate window uh, with that help in. And you can search for stuff here, and you can scroll down. And you can see all of the parameters, all of the help for this command. And all of the DBA tools have this help built in. And it's very valuable, especially for the examples in my mind. But you can come down to the examples and see how you use it and how it might fit our problem. 
So this is going to return a custom a custom object with a server name, database name, and the date and, and last time backups were performed. That's exactly what we need right now. So I can copy that and I can paste it into my console. I'm going to change the server name to MS SQL 1, which is just a connection I have to my instance. And you can say I've got a bunch of information returned. It's not in the best format, but this is showing me every database on MS SQL 1 and the backups, if I've taken any. It's not looking good, folks. So here you can see my Northwind database has a last backup and the date time of when that happened. If it had had differentials and logs, those would also be filled in. So this looks good, right? But it's not very readable. If I have a lot of instances, it's going to get out of hand pretty quickly. Five minutes left. So we can, thank you. We can use format table and that'll format it in a different view still on our screen, right? We can still see what we need, but it's still not perfect. The best way we need here, and if we need to share it too, we need to get that, get that information out of PowerShell into something like a CSV or Excel file that we can share with our boss. So let's export that to a CSV. And I said that uh, CSVs are natively handled. Oh, I have to tell it where it would like to go. Let's put it in the backup CSV. And if I open that backup CSV, again on the wrong window, you can see that all of the information has been dumped out into Excel. Now it's here, but it's not great, right? The formatting is not great, but I could easily go through all 400 of my instances, dump it into a CSV and then do some manual work, right? Well, remember that we can extend PowerShell with functions, uh, with modules. There is a really powerful module called Import Excel, which uh, you can use to uh, take data from PowerShell and put it into nicely formatted Excel spreadsheets. So I have a uh, demo script called Excel report that I've written. It is going to connect to my two instances that I have on my box and then put that information into Excel. It's created it as a table and it's added conditional formatting to highlight anywhere where I have problems. And here you can easily see that some of my databases are being backed up nicely and some of them I've got problems and I need to go and address. Now the code for that script is on that repo, but it is literally like 10 lines. Uh, and the most complicated bit was getting the conditional formatting. To actually get data and pop it into Excel uh, is really easy with this module. And DBA Tools is obviously my favorite module ever, but Import Excel is right there behind it because I love Excel and this is so cool. So that's kind of the wrap up uh, of a speedy tour through PowerShell. Uh, I think we have like three minutes uh, left to go. So if we've got any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Uh, I also have a feedback link. If you have feedback, I would love that. Um, tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me what I can do better. Um, and if if there aren't any questions, or if there are, I'm happy to take them. But these three commands, if you learn nothing else, remember find module to find our modules, get command to find the commands we need, and then get dash help to learn how we can use them. Have we got any questions in the room or online? Not that I can see in the room and online, no. There are Perfect. a couple of thank yous and thank yous are good. Thank you much. Awesome. So yeah, it looks like you're in the clear. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining me. Uh, please do leave the session feedback. Not only is it beneficial for me, but it's beneficial for the trees because SQL bits are planting a tree for every 10, I believe. Uh, session feedbacks they get. And I also think you can win a prize. So there's like three good reasons to leave, leave some feedback with this last two minutes. Great, thank you very much. Perfect, thank you.